In the late 18th century, the French Revolution saw massive changes sweep through the country of France, which has historically been one of the most influential countries in Europe, to the point where, after the fall of Napoleon, Austrian diplomat Clemens von Metternich famously quipped that when France sneezes, Europe catches a cold. The cold he was referring to is nationalism. <music> So this video here isn't going to be a blow-by-blow -blow recap of the French Revolution. What I'm going to do here is show some of the connections between the French Revolution and the growth of nationalism through Europe and then the rest of the world. Before the French Revolution, France was divided into what we call the estate system. The first estate, the clergy, and the second estate, the nobility, made up only about 3% of the French population, whereas 97% of the French population made up the third estate. And the third estate was a big mishmash of people from the poor peasants to doctors and lawyers and people with an increasing amount of wealth. Also in the 18th century, we had the period known as the Enlightenment, which was the age of reason, the age of ideas, where all of a sudden, philosophers started to question where power comes from. And traditionally, France was governed under the divine right of kings, which meant that kings claimed that they had their power from God. And people generally didn't really question that until the Enlightenment. But these Enlightenment philosophers began to show people that everyday people could have power in the decision making of their countries. And when enough people saw that, they could see their power in numbers and see themselves as a nation. And so that idea of where power comes from started to gradually shift away from gods and kings to ordinary everyday people. Now, at the end of the 18th century, France kind of saw a perfect storm of challenges that really quickly could lead to upheaval. There was a massive economic collapse, food shortages and grain shortages, and all of this was very poorly handled by a king who wasn't quite the best leader that France could have used at the time, King Louis XVI. And so all of these enlightenment ideas started to resonate with people who saw that maybe change could come and change could be positive. And so at the climax of this upheaval, the third estate saw the power that they had in numbers because the third estate was by far the largest chunk of the population of France. They revolted against the leadership and established the National Assembly, which was this acclaimed new governing body of France that was majority made up of members of the third estate, but really a state didn't matter anymore. This new National Assembly increased political participation and its members were elected directly by the people. No longer was power to govern France coming from the divine right. One of the most important documents created by this National Assembly was the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen, and it enshrined some of these Enlightenment values on this new nation of France, ensuring equality between people regardless of where they were born. And it enshrined that connection between citizens that were now starting to see themselves as a people connected and as a nation. And that government would make decisions not based on the whims of any one leader, but based on the general will of the community. Tricky thing here though, how do you actually determine what the general will of the community might be? The period from 1789 to 1799 that we most closely associate with the French Revolution saw tremendous upheaval, most characterized by the extremely repressive reign of terror where any enemies of the revolution could be executed for any reason that was seen as being going against the values and goals of the revolution. Despite all of this upheaval, however, these nationalistic values persisted and this idea that power should come from the people and that the people have this common shared bond, want to see a future together, and that power should come from the people that continued into the Napoleonic era, where even though Napoleon became essentially this authoritarian figure again, what happened was all of these nationalistic ideas remained with the people that made up his army, so that when he began to extend the revolutionary wars into his conquest of Europe, his army brought these ideas to different parts of Europe. And all of a sudden, people in different kingdoms began to see themselves as nations and started to question 
the authority that was governing them. In different parts of Europe, monarchies and kingdoms were made up of lots of different people of different nations that we might consider now. And so as this wave of nationalism was spreading throughout Europe, well, Europe would never be the same again. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and we will see you again next time.